Hello, Senior Stoner fan. Just the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Puffco proxy and bub. Diamond dab of the day. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. As always, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends. Send a like and a reply to all comments. Let's get started with today's topic. How many of you out there have been forced to change a doctor? Doctor goes out of business, retires, is arrested, malpractice, tells you they're not going to deal with you anymore. Whatever the reason. We've all had it happen. Well, guess what? It's extremely uncomfortable. Especially if it's a doctor who you're dealing with, frankly, with things that are critically important. I have a pain management doctor. And he's been pushing me back and pushing me back and pushing me back for 12 weeks. So I began to get the feeling, as anyone would, that something's a little bit off. So you know what you got to do when this happens? You got to plan ahead. You do not want the rug being pulled out from under you by your doctor. You want to be in control of the situation. So on occasion, it's definitely necessary to change a doctor for whatever reason, whatever circumstances. They could move. They could die. They could retire. Could be patient sad dissatisfaction, or it could be them saying they don't want to deal with you anymore. Tremendous amount of people lose their pain management doctors because they don't want to deal with them anymore. They've chosen they don't want to prescribe narcotics anymore. They've chosen they don't want to deal with you as a particular patient anymore, whatever it is. Well, what do you do? First of all, you got to have a plan before it happens. You got to be able to handle it because it's going to be coming quick and hard and it can get very stressful. So you got to know when it's time to switch. It's like job hunting. I had a wonderful tech talent, thank God, knock wood. It's called being able to read the writing on the wall. I never, knock wood, got terminated. You know what I did? I resigned. You know why? Because I knew something was going to happen. The company was going to change. Something was not right. So you got to know when to switch. It's a serious decision to change doctors. So the decision to switch should be out of necessity. That's right. So if a doctor is dismissing your complaints, or if you feel they're ignoring you and not handling you the way you want to be, if the doctor interrupts you and doesn't interact with you, if the doctor prescribes medicine or orders procedures without knowing your history fully and without little discussion, if your doctor's been involved with any kind of malpractice allegations, or if you have a specific condition that your doctor's not a specialist in, you know what? You need to find a new doctor. Decide what to tell your formal doctor, your former doctor, if anything. When switching doctors, you need to decide whether you have reasons that are worth explaining. If you're leaving because you're unhappy, it's okay to express that. However, many people are not okay with face-to-face -face confrontation. Maybe write a letter and mail it to your previous doctors, the doctor you're going to leave office. If you're uncomfortable with your current doctor for any reason, it's totally acceptable to leave without any explanation. Doctors are busy and may not even notice a missing patient, especially if the visits are infrequent. Ask your formal doc, your former doctor for a referral. Sometimes switching doctors is not a result of a bad relationship. If you're on good terms, there's no better source for a referral than your previous physician. If you're relocating, things like that. So, as your doctor already knows your medical history, it's important when you find a new doctor that they can actually support your transfer to the new doctor and send all the information that you've had over the period of time they've been treating you. You see, finding a replacement can be advice of people, can be talking to friends and family members, you can be seeing a health care professional for something totally different and ask them about other people in the profession, specialists that you're looking for. Search online. The AMA has websites. Search your insurance provider. If you don't have that, the Affordable Care Act. Use physician rating sites such as health grades. Remember, there's a lot of help out there for us when we're about to switch doctors. 
Schedule your first appointment with the doctor that you've decided you want to see and think might be right for you. It's an interview. Discuss your mental, your physical history, and your needs. You know what? If you don't feel it's right, move on. Evaluate your experience. After that first appointment, you'll need to consider if that doctor's right for you. Be honest with yourself. Not a popularity contest. Was your new doctor able to help you with your specific medical issue? Or are you going to repeat the mistakes with the old doctor, with the new doctor? Was the new doctor courteous and respectful? Poor bedside manner is often a big reason that people switch doctors. So go over the conversation that you had with that doctor in your head and determine what made you comfortable or uncomfortable and get in touch with your feelings. You do not want to repeat of previous issues. If the transition is not, and I repeat, if the transition is not by your choice, you've got to still go through these processes. You do not want to be like a ricochet bullet, and just go boom to the first sign that says same specialist as the one you just dealt with. No, because you could run into the same quagmire. You need to look once again at reputation, find out on the internet what other people are saying about these doctors, and make sure the new doctor takes your insurance. Call the office, check online. And your medical records are your medical records. Have them forward. That's right, previous doctors must do that. Have them forward your previous results and your records. They might charge you, but you are entitled to your information. And you know, preparing a transition to another doctor is something that you got to kind of do organized. You got to have a smooth transition. Try to make sure there's no gaps in coverage. You don't want to be left without a doctor during an emergency or have no prescription medicine when you need it with no one to refill it. Make sure that you get a supply of refills for any prescription that you have with your old doctor prior to getting searching for the new one. Of course, if done without your own consent and somebody, a doctor's telling you they don't want to treat you anymore, have to handle it differently. It's important that you have your medical history available to you. I have files that I can take with me to a doctor to completely, not just verify and prove, but to have the doctor have a complete, kind of like a, a floor plan, if you will, of where everything is on my body, what's been done, but also of what problems I've got. You see, new patient forms and things that you fill out in doctor's offices might not be enough. Lastly, and I've been touching on it all through this discussion, what happens if your doctor says to you, I'm no longer going to prescribe you opiates? Are you going to go to the street? Are you going to buy heroin? Are you going to pay $50 a pill to get your Oxycontin? What are you going to do? Okay, you've got to stay calm. It's happened to me. My physician, who got me into this situation with all these pills and who was prescribing them for me for over 25 years, decided one day she's no longer going to prescribe narcotics in her office. And I'm like, what? Yes, I'm no longer going to do it for you. There's a pain management doctor in the same plaza I'm in right over there. And I'm like, what? So the rug was pulled between my psychiatrist, my psychologist, Mrs. Stoner, and banging my head against the wall, I made it through. I don't want all of you to have to have your psychiatrist, your psychologist, your significant other, and head banging. I want you all to know it can happen. It's happening every day, thousands of times around the country. Doctors are turning off the switches on patients for whatever reason. Because the doctor is in control, unfortunately. We are not in control. They're in control. They decide who they want to treat. We decide who we want to go to, but they can decide who they want to treat. So you've got to stay calm. You've got to stay calm. You cannot freak out about it. I freaked out about it when it happened to me. And frankly, I'm in a better place now. Because if it ever happens to me again, I'm not going to freak out. I know what I have to do. You have to have a backup. You have to understand that in America today, medicine 
especially pain management medicine where there are narcotics involved, is like the Wild West. Very, very wide variations in the way the doctors treat the patients. Some doctors say, oh, yes, opiate therapy, absolutely, let's, let's start you. Other doctors say, I don't care if you have a fatal disease, we're not prescribing you anything like that. I don't do it at my practice. So remember, you're in control of your body, you're in control of your health care. You have to find the doctor if you need to change doctors. That's going to accommodate you. You're not there to accommodate the doctor. The doctor's there to accommodate you. Keep shopping. Keep your head up. Keep your chin up. Don't get frustrated. Don't get sad. It happens to everybody. Changing doctors is no longer a simple thing, especially for people in pain. This has been The Real Senior Stoner with the Puffco Proxy and Bub Diamond Dab of the Day. Trying to guide us all on how we can switch doctors, especially if the rug gets pulled out from under us. As always, since I know I helped everybody today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends, send a like, and I reply to all the comments. This has been The Real Senior Stone, everybody. Cheers. Have a wonderful day. And remember, if you lose your doctor, it's going to be okay. Cheers.